It is one of Webster Parish's biggest employers, and it's considering moving to East Texas unless they get some help from city and state officials. A woman is in the hospital and a man is behind bars after a shooting near DeKalb, Texas. Well, Joe, I know it's going to be nice for us to get a little bit of rain, but for the folks here who may have friends or family in the Houston area, any concerns for flooding or anything there? I've got Caddo deputies, I've got Bossier deputies, I've got boats, we've got amphibious vehicles here, and we're told a family of five trapped about seven miles in that direction. I can only describe this as a mess. This was a scoreboard. We begin with some breaking news today as students at Louisiana State University were advised to run, hide, or fight. More pressure on Mayor Adrian Perkins today to abandon the list of three recommendations for police chief. Voters in Sevier County, Arkansas will soon get to decide on a new tax that'll pay for a new hospital. They say you can't be in two places at once. Well, what about three? We went digging through public records and found LSU's neurosurgery department was billing Medicare for surgeries by a top doctor who didn't actually perform them. I'm here in Franklin, Louisiana. We're a little bit uh, northwest of Morgan City. Of course, Morgan City seeing the worst of this, but I want to show you what we are dealing with right now before we take the video. And the mayor also said he would not interview Raymond for the position. So how did this decision come to be? The crazy cat lady. It is an enduring entertainment stereotype, but it turns out not the real thing. This event is about the people who served us, those who are still here and those who cannot be here today. That's what this event's all about. Yes, the 36th annual Mud Bug Madness Festival is underway. Just got started and our Allison Lorraine is live at Festival Plaza. And Allison, I hope you're hungry because you're going to compete in the Mud Bug Eating Contest today. I know you were asking for some pointers yesterday. Are you ready? Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jamie Ostroff. First at four, an issue a judge has been warning about for two years has come to pass. The Caddo Juvenile Detention Center has reached capacity. Now this means that kids who are normally sent to detention are being released. I spoke with one of the judges who has to decide who stays and who goes. Judge Paul Young told me this morning there were 25 kids in the detention center. There are only 24 beds. Before lunchtime today, Young released two detainees to their parents. One is a boy with mental health issues accused of beating up his father. Another, a child who acted up in school and violated probation. Judge Young feels both of these children would have been better served by detention. If the system doesn't respond with an appropriate sanction, then that teaches the kid there are no sanctions. Well, this influx is largely due to Louisiana's new raise the age law. It currently requires all 17 year olds accused of nonviolent crimes to be prosecuted as juveniles. Now that law will expand to all crimes next summer. This is an ongoing issue that Judge Young has spoken about with us, including as we have been following this one for a while. You can check out our extensive three investigates coverage at KTBS.com. Tell you all about your seven day forecast and we'll update you on your traffic tracker here in a few minutes. Joe, you know, you and I love being above average, but uh, not like this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not above average in many things, but uh, temperature wise, I'm experiencing above average, so I guess that counts too. Yeah, there you go. Above average humility too. Yes. <laughs> All right, thanks, Joe. <laughs> a memorial service is scheduled for a man who was shot to death in Shreveport last week. That service for Jonathan Ibakwa is set for 11 tomorrow morning at New Elizabeth Missionary Baptist Church over on Juella. According to the Caddo Coroner's Office, Ibakwa was found dead last Wednesday night in a backyard that was over on the 3500 block of Kingswood Drive. He was only 35 years old. No one has been arrested in this shooting, so if you have any information that can help investigators, call Caddo Crime Stoppers. Be on the lookout for porch pirates in the area. The thieves targeted a home near Clyde Fant Parkway, but this time they weren't after packages. Our Roxette Pietri Freeman spoke with the owner of that home and Roxette, what'd they take? Well, Jamie, this time they stole lawn furniture, believe it or not, and plants. Well, for tips on how to keep your belongings safe from porch pirates, you can head to KTBS.com. It was a big show of support for Shreveport police and other first responders, and you could say it was in the bag. Volunteers, with the help of some corporate sponsors, filled more than 500 goodie bags for SPD patrol officers, as well as some area firefighters. 
They got bottled water, snacks, notepads, pens, and a few other goodies. And this is an effort by a neighborhood Facebook group. They have a long name, Broadmoor slash South Island slash Captain Shreve slash everything east of I-49 911 calls. Turns out they are also long on support for first responders. Everybody needs a little bit of encouragement, you know, even, even your warriors. They, they need to know that they're doing a good job and that's what we want them to know. There was also a special gift for the area's community liaison officer. Corporal Chase Crow received that aluminum American flag right there, shape of a U.S. map with that symbolic blue line. Wonderful thing. All right, folks, our team is fired up and ready to go for another night of Friday football fever. We'll have cameras on sidelines across the Arklatex bringing you all of the action. We're going to get things started in our 9 and 10 o'clock newscast tonight. Then you can join us right here on KPX JCW 21 for the Landers Dodge Scores and Highlights Show. Well, he may have been off the clock, but this Texas police chief was not about to let a couple of drag racers pass him by. Plus rivals on the field, but in it together. A powerful message out of two communities shaken by recent gun violence. We'll be right back with your state by state headlines. Take a look at this. This was supposed to be the site of senior night this weekend. Everybody here very confident that's not going to happen. Here's why the bleachers gone, the field littered. Look at that scoreboard. That's not a scoreboard anymore, but I want to show you around what's going on here. There is debris everywhere. If Josh Hale wants to follow me this way. Now, if you look into this field, there are student volunteers. Folks like this have been out all day long. Nobody asked them to do this. They just came to pick up all of the pieces here. Now there is damage everywhere in this section of campus, but uh, the athletic department, even though it sustained what could be millions of dollars in damage, everybody's just happy that no one was seriously hurt on this campus. It sounded like a freight train, like it was crazy. And I was like really scared, I didn't know what it was. Just nothing but wind and uh, gray. So we decided to just go to our bathroom and stay in there until it passed. And once it passed, this is what the storm left behind. Toppled power lines, downed trees, athletic fields in shambles, debris everywhere. Pretty emotional. You know, uh, we work every day to try to make this a special place. And then you see it uh, get torn apart. It's, it's pretty dramatic. For that, Louisiana Tech President Les Geis says he'll offer counseling to anyone who needs it. He's not sure how many students living on or off campus will need a new place to stay but he's ready to offer help there too. We're reaching out to them and saying, if you need a place, you know, we can, we've got some additional capacity on the core of our campus, in the core of our campus. But it's the athletic department that really has its work cut out. Baseball, softball, soccer, tennis, all of those, you know, are, are, are devastated. But the athletic director will gladly plan home games elsewhere in Ruston for now, knowing things could have been a lot worse. When you see the path of this storm and realize that it took out the baseball wall and 40 feet next is a dorm in which other than maybe some windows breaking out or, or, or awnings gone, it, it, there was not total destruction and it could have been that way. It could have been a far more worse deal. All right, I just want to show you more damage. Several cars in this parking lot between the baseball field and the softball field damaged. Here's one with blue tarps on the window. Here's another. Dr. Geis says he is going to have insurance counselors come out here to campus because a lot of these students probably have never had to deal with filing a claim of this magnitude before. Now, meanwhile, a lot of power was out on campus today. Not all of it, however, because uh, LaTeX actually generates a lot of its own energy, only gets some from the city. Still not enough to have classes. Ca uh, classes were canceled today. They will be canceled again tomorrow. Live in Ruston this evening, Jamie Ostroff, KTBS 3 News. I just want to tell you how proud I am of you and how far you came. Believe it or not, you have climbed some tough hills and battles over the years. I will always support you. That's part of a text message Travion Anderson sent to his girlfriend, Shateri Payne, six days before she died. A young officer in the prime of her life was killed in a senseless act of violence. Payne, who had just graduated from the academy, was leaving to start her night shift with the Shreveport Police Department January 9th. She was shot in the head in her driveway. 173. Are y'all putting out that Travion Anderson is a suspect? That's 10-4. Okay, I have him detained in a patrol car at this time. 
We believe Anderson shot and killed her and concocted the false narrative of her being murdered by an unknown suspect. His cousin, Lawrence Pierre II, and a friend, Glenn Frierson, are accused of helping him hide the gun. Prosecutors are now building their case against Anderson, the man who they say pulled the trigger. It's a big one. And we went through it all. Hundreds of pages revealing text messages, Google searches, and interviews that tell the story of a planned out murder of a woman trying to escape an abusive relationship. Investigators interviewed Payne's mother and grandmother, who was on the phone with Payne when she died, with the line on mute. Both women said Anderson treated Payne poorly, breaking her police radio and accusing her of cheating in the weeks leading up to her death. They said Payne had found a new apartment, put down a deposit, and was supposed to pick up the key on January 15th. But according to Payne's grandmother, Anderson had other plans. She said Payne told her in December that Anderson said he would kill her first before she left. Investigators also got a warrant to go through Anderson's phone. What they found revealed to prosecutors a deadly plan in the works. Deleted Google searches included, but were not limited to, shooting insurance, does Aflac pay for gunshots, accident insurance, gunshot wound to arm, gunshot wound to leg, and can you die from a gunshot to leg. Affidavits also reveal a series of text messages between Anderson and Pierre exchanged before Payne was killed. January 8th, Pierre texts Anderson, let's knock it out tomorrow. January 9th, Anderson seemingly tracks Payne's every move as she gets ready for work. 7.50 p.m. Bet she putting on clothes. 7.54 p.m. She just about done. 8.14 p.m. Should be coming down. 8.16 p.m. Outside. Officer Shatari Payne was shot at 8.18 p.m. An old book of poems, a jury of neighbors, shares the stories of fictional characters speaking from beyond the grave. Suppose a boy steals an apple. But it was a stranger than fiction moment when Robert Stroud realized his late mother, Margaret Eubank Stroud, had some unfinished business of her own. One of my mom's quote was, be sure your sins will find you out. And so I, I, I kidded my brothers and sisters how she's been hiding this deep, dark secret all these years, and now she's been found out that she had this overdue library book. Spoon River Anthology, checked out in 1934. Margaret was 11 years old at the time. Robert says he was downsizing when he found the book among his parents' collection. He thought, that, Oh, this is too good. I, I, I'm going to return it just to see what they say. Robert didn't give his name, thinking he'd have a good laugh and close the book on a short chapter. But then the library posted about the return of Spoon River on Facebook. KTBS saw the post and told the story. Yeah. That book just got returned last <laughs> That's week. amazing. And honestly, uh, my wife and I don't pay a whole lot of attention to the news. We knew nothing about it until uh, Caitlin, our 11-year-old, uh, she came home from school and she has to do a news article or three news articles every week that she has to summarize and she asked uh, her mom, can I do the article about mom's library book? And the Strouds did some research. And then the next thing that we found out is that this went viral and uh, all the different links all over the United States from the New York Times to Inside Edition and then all over the world. And then they did some math. When the book was checked out, Shreve Memorial Library would charge five cents per day that a book was overdue. In that vein, I'd like to give you a check um, for oh. an overdue fine. Oh and my! It, it even says it up here at the top. It uh, does. Over book, book return, book return right late. There. It was thirty thousand days late. That's one thousand five hundred forty-two dollars and sixty-five cents from all five Stroud siblings paid in full. I'm still uh, amazed and astounded, but we will put the money to good use, uh, using it to promote early lit literacy and lifelong learning. An epilogue of sorts in this story about a lover of literature. My mom was just an exceptional, neat, neat person. I grew up going to the library. My mom took me to the library a lot growing up and things like that. And so I have a lot of books. So, uh, and I got that love for my mom. But as it turns out, this story also has a prequel. The personal work of uh, S.M. Saford, that was my grandfather's. And it says DPU, Bank, Kansas City, Missouri, December 1st, uh, 1900. I found another library book that was my grandfather's that uh, needed to, at some point, need to be returned, apparently. Is that going back? 
uh, Highland Baptist Church is no longer in existence. Uh, just don't look forward to any new installments. You don't have any overdue library books of your own, do you? Not that I'm going to admit to. Jamie Ostroff, KTBS 3 News.